away at all here in the forward pocket. Although slowly but surely, Melbourne bringing it back around towards the half-back flank. Don Scott just wrote on his program, why? Well, it's lovely the young players would like to see senior players helping out on the bench. A bit of encouragement, Don. It wouldn't affect you. No. Free kick here to Carlton. It'll be taken by Andrew Graham, who put his body in and uh, reaped the rewards of the free kick. Up in the air, Ralph and Cox. Almost a mark in the middle of the pack to Honey Bun. Again, close towards the boundary line. And... Oh. A neat push in the back, according oh. to the umpire. From here it looked to be a reasonably decent push in the side with a player that had control of the ball. I reckon Let's have a look at it. It's in the side. It's in the ah, oh, that's in the back. Oh, of and, course uh, it's in the back. The umpire was right. It's been taken by Hartney as a result of that kick out down on the centre wing. Up towards the forward pocket again, honey bun, but it's knocked away. Oh. Fidge is clearing. Towards the boundary line again. Players losing sight of the ball. Batterston. Dale Dixon, a quick kick out of it to half-back. Now Melbourne should clear down to the centre wing position. Neat use of the body. Thorne, who's back on the ground, but Southby beats him to it. Straight at the ball. Time to steady. Went for a bounce and was held. That's holding the ball. That's the it's old, old Kevy Bartlett trick, isn't it? Haven't seen that one for years, that one. Players are normally a wake-up, but Jeff must have thought he was playing 12 years ago after that one. A penalty, and uh, Hutchison will take it on the half-forward flank, with Melbourne about to move back into attack. Hutchison, a high one towards uh, full four. They've got a lot of height there, Melbourne, and here's a snap of the goals by Peter Tossel. Though this might bounce through just the wrong side of the post. Good effort by Peter Tossel, and uh, through for one behind. So the scoreboard shows Melbourne on 4-7, Carlton on 3-4, as we see Peter Tossel there on screen. Now it's Jeff Southby. I must repeat, one of the best fullbacks ever to, to have played the game. I would imagine we see Alvin bring it out towards the half back line this is Shane Robertson he's normally a left footer but he's a nice right foot kick down towards half forward looking for Smith but it beats him over the line and out of bounds we've been playing in the second quarter 13 and a half minutes 4-7 Melbourne Carlton 3-4 the ball is on the half forward line for the Carlton side as we see Honey Bun and Hughes to do the ruck work Don, I was going to say the pace appears to have gone off the game and it's getting down now to just physical contact, isn't well, it? Well, it is. It's a, well, you see there the way uh, Elvin threw himself at the player and uh, there's a lot of contact, players chasing and the ball, you know, not being directed in the right way, but that's attributable to the fact that both players or both teams are trying to win this game. Ted Feed shoots at goal offline. Melbourne with opportunities and they've kicked now 4-7. Carlton a 3-4. The player who is really impressing me in this game is Bailey in the centre for uh, for Melbourne. He's doing a lot of very, very... How many kicks, Kevin? Seven kicks and five hand passes, but uh, really is playing well. As we see Hartney, got the loose man here in Gagan. Uh -huh. Oh, gee, over the top to Smith. Here's a chance for the Blues. They've got the loose man. The lead's been made up there by Honey Bun. Out he comes. He's too slow to get there, though. Danny Hughes... Hand pass to John Fidge, who's like a rock at Gibraltar at centre half back. A poor kick. Kennedy, left foot, looking for Honey Bun. Ducking back is Rodney Wright to take a safe mark in the back pocket. He was off, and rightly so, said the umpire. It's a play on decision. Back towards Batterston. He's caught. Gets it across to Paul O'Brien. The umpire said he was pushed in the back too. So, yeah, lucky. so indiscriminate tackling going on here, Don. It's interesting. I just watched a young Gagan who got a kick a couple of minutes, not oh, 30 seconds ago on Wilson. He's really exploiting Wilson. Wilson just does not chase. And uh, Gagan, at every opportunity, is running away up the ground, and the Carlton players should look more for him. Half forward for Melbourne. The mark is taken by Hartney, who is Peter Thorne is on the mark, back on the ground. Fitch is still on. John Fitch from behind can't take the mark. It's Batterston all off the side of the boot. Travels about 25 metres. Kelly O'Donnell flies, punched away by Alvin to Dean. Dean to Robertson. Robertson to Sheldon. Here's a chance for the Blues. Kenny Sheldon from centre half forward lines up the goals. A one out duel. Honey Bun and Hughes. Hughes over the back. Goes for the punch. Now knocks it away. And that's very, very good defensive play by Danny Hughes, the export Adelaide player. I was just going to mention earlier about that's a dying art punching the ball out. And we saw how Tommy Alvin threw him himself in there that was a very offensive move the way he threw himself in punched the ball forward and Carlton took it down in the forward line forward pocket as we see honey bun getting it down to Malin oh cops it high around the neck and Phil Malin will take a free kick about 
30 metres from, well, not even 30, 25 metres from goal and a 45 degree angle. And I think he helped the umpire make up his mind too. Yes, not a bad uh, exhibition of dramatic work there by Phil Malin. And, and we'll kick this, Peter. Well, he's normally a very good kick, Graham, and uh, drop punt. Let's see what he does with it. Oh, he's hooked that one across his body and puts it through from behind. A bit of a blue going on behind the play there between Malin and uh, who's his opponent? Brett it's, Bailey. Uh, Bailey, in fact. He's a bit of a tough boy, Bailey. So is Malin. As Cox kicks out, goes towards the member's side of the ground, looking for all day. Punched away, out over the boundary line, and there'll be a throw in. It's Kevin Sheedy there on screen on the Melbourne bench. Interesting. And, oh, well, there's a few brains there between Crackers and Kevin. Boland. Towards the half-back line. Xavier Tanner. Played many a fine game here on this ground, playing for North Melbourne. The two blondes chase after this one. Andrew Graham against Teddy Fitch. Now Graham's caught with the ball to Thorne. Cleverly done. He was grabbed. That's a free kick to Peter Thorne. Now this is danger here for the Carlton side. If he can get it well, the ball wasn't delivered back to him properly. So it slowed it up the game a bit. Now Thorne normally a very, very good kick of a football on that left foot. There's the short pass to Brian Wilson. The lead was made. And Wilson is within kicking distance, about uh, 40 to 45 metres out from goal. Very, very slight angle. Brian Wilson is yet to score a goal after kicking 10 the last time these two sides met. Let's see, he's going for the torpedo punt kick. It's not a bad looking kick just across the face and the mark has been taken for Melbourne right near the face of the goal by Frankie Regalo. Now, Regolo, there's the replay, a good mark. He judged that beautifully. Franks has already kicked two goals. He's chipped it across, and his ex-Assumption College teammate there in Peter Tossels has marked the ball 25 metres out from goal. It was bad play by Scott Howell. Scott Howell should not have allowed his player to get by himself, especially when you're kicking for oh, goal. Like what a shocker from Tossel, although it's still in play. It's right across towards the boundary line. Carlton through Hartney, who's been a great player, clears out towards the half-back flank and uh, they retain possession. That's Shane Robertson, further afield, out on towards the half-back flank, the practice, cricket practice wicket area. A free kick, it'll go Carlton's way, it'll be taken by Neil Gagan, who's done a pretty good job on Brian I can't, Wilson. I can't believe Peter Tussle didn't make the distance from where he was. That's not a good kick either. Melbourne will clear, kick down towards half-forward, floating in the air. Carlton free kick. <clears throat> that ground doesn't look as uh, holding as what it should be, Peter. It's, uh, I'd say it would be a little bit treacherous underfoot. Oh, Ted Fidge has just uh, done the business over there with uh, Tom Alvin. Alvin was wrestling with the player first, and Fidge ran 25 yards, and down went Alvin. So it's on again across on the outer wing. Well, you saw that ground. Mm. He should be reported. Should he be reported? And, yes. I'm just trying to find where he is in the middle, and I think, is he having his number taken? He's yes, he is. He's on the right of screen uh, there, Teddy Fidger. Right. I think just prior to that, uh, it was just two yes, out. That was the end of it. Yes, and uh, Ted Fidge ran about 25 yards, and uh, Alvin all of a sudden was laying face down. He's the, reported. The books are out, and there's a Melbourne player also in the hands of the trainers, so... Still a little fire and uh, and a little spite in this game. We're at the 20-minute mark of the second quarter. Well, if they keep going <laughs> like this, they, they might have to be short of players for the start of next season, I think, Graham. And Alvin is going to come out of this with a free kick, and he's had his number taken too as a result of that exchange. That probably now would mean about a half a dozen reports, I'd say, and we're uh, not even at half-time as yet. So, Alvin... Don's loving this. No, no, no. Don't be so... That is stupid. Here's the <laughs> kick from Alvin in towards half forward. Buckley pushing in the back. I think the free kick would have been there anyway. <clears throat> and this is John Fidge. And he takes it at oh, half back. A... Kicks long Good up player. towards half forward. Ted Fidge roves it beautifully, then loses possession. Pushing it on in front of him. Goes to ground. Wilson... Oh, good thing that missed. Hartney with a very good hip and shoulder, and Wilson's been penalised for holding the ball. It's about time the runner went out to Wilson and told him he's playing top football now because he should be handballing. He's trying to do too much. This is 
top grade football the way these both teams are playing at the moment. I agree with you, Don. Down towards Fedge. Oh. Great mark. Oh. One at centre half forward and one at centre half back. Uh, how fortunate of Melbourne to have such good key position players in those crucial positions. Here's well, the kick. Ted is on the, actually on the half, half forward bank, Graham. All day. Batterston in the centre. Out wide, Melbourne players on their own. It looks like Thorne out there. Thorne with a left foot shot at goal from 25 metres out. Oh. Hit the post. Well, actually, that was a really good build up. Thorne uh, got by himself there. The Carlton players are a little bit undisciplined. If they man can't Melbourne up, they'll eventually give it away. I don't agree with that, Don. They won't give it away. The young Melbourne side, they're pretty well disciplined by Ray Jordan. It's on uh, centre wing as Kennedy gets it down towards Mark Buckley. That's out of bounds on the ball. And in my opinion, the best player on the ground is about to kick this football. Again, I reckon John Fidge is playing a terrific But you chop and change. You've nominated Britt Bailey. Now you're going to I John Fidge. I didn't say Fidge. Bailey was the best player on the ground. I said he's playing well. There's uh, Fidge towards half forward. It's punched away. Back towards Withers. Withers. Oh, lovely smother there by uh, Phil Malin. In they go after it. Teddy Fidge is in there after it. And the umpires plucked the free kick out of this one to Adrian Batterston. He's on centre wing. As he's trying to... He was just about off and he directed the umpire's attention to Malin going over the mark. There he goes, up towards the forward line. Wilson from behind. No mark. It's grabbed by Regalo. He gets in the hand. He tries to get in the hand pass, but trying to do too much. He gets caught with the ball and it's a free kick to Andrew Graham almost in the back pocket for Carlton. He's going to go out towards the centre wing on the member side of the ground. John Fidge from behind flies, but he's got a teammate there to lend a hand, and that's uh, little Paul O'Brien on centre wing. O'Brien to send Melbourne back into attack again. Honey Bun in from behind. No. Road was in there for the mark. It's loose. Here's a chance for Melbourne and a quick kick down in there by Dixon. Wilson contested, knocked it away. It's loose. Has a chance. Brian Wilson running in. Should have handballed. I tell you what, I hope he goals from there. There was a player there in the goal square for a handball, but Wilson backed his judgment. And he's put it through. Melbourne 5 9, Carlton 3 5. I got a mate. I got a mate. I got a mate called Mazda. Real good mate I go to work with. Real good mate who works real hard. Real good mate I got to rely on. My Mazda please the best investment I ever made. That two litre engine works real hard. Five speed transmission will go anywhere. Power assisted front discs will stop any time. Add Mazda comfort and reliability to all that muscle. You got more than a ute, you got a mate. I got a mate called Mazda. Hey, look at this. It's the Mobile Wizard, the new fun toy for kids three to eight years of age. It assists coordination and strength of arm and chest muscles. The Mobile Wizard can be used outdoors or indoors. It's light and maneuverable. The Mobile Wizard is easy to assemble. Replacement parts are available and comes with a 12 months guarantee. So get a Wizard and whiz around for years. Brought to you by Easy Tips Australia. Available from these stores. And Honeybun gets his hands to the ball a lot. Doesn't take enough marks, I don't think, for a player that's where the ball is as much as he is. And at the 24 and a half minute mark, it's a 16 point lead to Melbourne. 5 9 39, Carlton 3 5 23. Hughes is a very disciplined player in defence. He's punching the ball away every time in that ball is in I the air. I think Carlton should make a few changes. I'd be bringing Warren Roff out to uh, full forward. I'd put uh, Mark Buckley back there, at least get some movement up on that. Out to uh, centre forward, Ralph, you mean? Yes, yeah, centre yeah. half forward, I'm sorry. Up towards, there's the kick up towards the half forward line. Melbourne looking much the better side at the moment. There's Roger Ellingworth trying to hook it back. It was touched, I think, off the boot, so that's not out of bounds on the full. It's, and uh, Stephen Phillips got uh, some news for us on the boundary line. Thank you, Peter. Just interesting, Kevin Sheedy came down to the Melbourne bench, talked to Crackers Keenan, the former Essendon North and Melbourne Ruckman. He was very interested in the wind conditions, uh, the holding conditions of the ground, how the umpire was bouncing the ball in the centre and uh, Crackers really filled him in which is quite surprising I suppose Pete Well Crackers is uh, an ex-Essendon player at one stage Steve so I don't think that's too surprising That depends on how he meant filled him in I suppose Yeah that's right, might have given him the wrong mail, 5-9 to 3-5 
Here's uh, Teddy Fidge on the left foot. He fires it. The wind takes the ball away and it sneaks through. No, it doesn't sneak through. If it's behind, it's out of bounds. In fact, right beside the behind post. Now, Carlton will have to hold Melbourne out in this little duel here. If Melbourne scored a goal just before half time, it'd be a very decisive break for them as uh, Howe punches it away. A chance for Greg Hutchison. Beautifully done onto the left foot. Hooks it back towards the goal square. Shane Robertson takes a mark. He comes away. He's trying to give the hand pass across. Now he eventually does to Hartney. Hartney runs to half back on the member side of the ground and kicks it out looking for Kenny Shelton, who hasn't been a dominant player today, as you probably would have imagined. Dean shuttled it across to Shelton. There's a head high tackle. And. Uh, by Boland and Kenny Sheldon on centre wing. Breaks away. A high ball towards half forward. John Fidge. Hughes punches the away. Alvin uses great strength. Charges through at centre half forward. Tries to get in the hand pass. He eventually does. Too many Melbourne players there though. There's a smothered kick. It comes up towards half forward. A hand pass from Paul O'Brien. Back towards Rodney Wright. Right towards two Carlton players and Mick Kennedy has a raffle there with his teammate Robertson and says it's mine. Kicks it across there to Road. No mark, but the umpire has paid it, although he didn't take it on the second bite. Peter Road, almost in the centre of the ground. Scoreboard, 3-5 Carlton, Melbourne 5-9 as the kick comes down towards John Fitch, who's playing a ripper game at centre back once again. There's a pass further afield, out on the outer side of the ground. It's all Melbourne out there. The ball has to come back. Very technical. Yes, Melbourne had a pretty handy break there. and now still on his own down there. Oh, Cox has got to take the kick, does he? Maybe it was a free kick before uh, Fitz took the mark. It was a free kick to Cox, and that's why they didn't allow the play on. 27 and a half minutes gone in the second term. A 16-point advantage to Melbourne as Daryl Cox kicks down towards the centre wing. In from behind was Howell to knock the ball loose. Tanner in the middle of the ground. And also Batterston, handball over the head, was intercepted. Good tackle. That'll be holding the ball. <clears throat> and Melbourne now starting to apply pressure in the middle of the ground. And a 15-metre penalty. Once again, a little technical. But the penalty has been uh, awarded. And Melbourne will now get this kick from directly in the middle of the ground. Almost down towards centre-half forward now when the penalty is applied. It's Withers. No leads. And Wilson calling for the ball in the air. And currently, while he's doing that, he's standing behind his opponent. Now he's going to come in and take the mark. Brian Wilson, honey bun in front again. And not a good effort to do either mark I or just spoil. Want, well, a little nudge. Did you see that tiny little nudge? Just enough to put honey bun underneath the ball. So clever play by Brian Wilson right in front of goal. This is a handy one if he can kick this one. And he has put it through for his second. In actual fact, Peter, I would say that the game is starting to, starting to slip away as far as Carlton is concerned. And uh, you'll see here on replay, Wilson behind his opponent, just edged him out. He yeah. judged just the ball. Enough, wasn't it? Yes, he judged the ball just a little bit better. A double interchange too by Carlton, as you see a shot from behind the goals of that uh, coming on is Oja, and uh, Ricky Nixon has come on the ground. Uh, McKenzie has gone off, Warren McKenzie and Andrew Graham, so uh, uh, they're in uh, trouble, Carlton, and I think uh, Colin Kinnear, the coach, can sense that at the moment. Three goals, four behind, that's a good lead by the Young Demons. The ball comes back to centre wing. This is Daryl Cox, kicks it right down towards half forward. It's punched away back towards the centre wing area. Shane Robertson hooks it back. Mark Buckley, a good effort because he'd slipped over. Now he gives in the hand pass to Malin. They want a goal here, the Blues, as Malin, a touch of the fumbles, goes back after the football, goes for the short pass, and the lead was made by Oja. And I would make sure I'd left this bloke on all the time, Oja. I reckon he can play a bit. Well, in the game that we saw, Peter, I think he kicked ten goals, eight, eight goals eight that goals. day. But you weren't impressed because he was on the, on the end of a lot of passes. Siren for half-time. Ogier now going back and making sure of it. It's a pretty crucial kick. Well, this is Carlton. a... Uh, They're 22 points down. And you can see the angle. No chance at all. And, in fact, I don't think a score. And so at half-time, Melbourne. 6 9 45, Carlton, 3 5 23. So it's a 22-point advantage to Melbourne. And their major goal scorer is Wilson and Rigolo, two goals each. Now let's go down and see what Stephen Phillips has to say because he has with him the current Brownlow medalist.
Thank you very much, Graham. Well, Peter, have you got over the uh, the thrill of Monday night yet? Back to uni the next day. That sort of brought me down to earth. Well, I noticed in the Herald the next morning your picture there. Uh, you're just about to have breakfast. You didn't look all that um, flash. Oh, I don't think you were that flash, really. <laughs> <laughs> now let's get back to this game out here, Melbourne. Um, fooling around a little in front of goal. They're not too direct. No, no, they've, they've uh, mucked around a bit, but they're starting to play a lot better now. And uh, they're doing the hard, tough uh, tackling and pressure sort of stuff. And I don't think the umpire's giving much of a go, really. I think that. Uh, there's been some weak free kicks given, and uh, it's uh, stopping but I think they're going to get on top uh, soon. Our commentators um, up there, especially Don Scott, were, were saying that Brian Wilson had to do more. There's not all that much of a difference between first and reserve grade in this standard grand oh, final. I don't think so, I don't think, but I think that uh, the guys aren't playing well enough to get the ball down to Willow. I think that when they get it down to him more, as they started to do in the last bit of that quarter, uh, he'll, he'll uh, do well again because he's just too good for them. But uh, I think that... Uh, the fact that our guys aren't getting it down there is probably why he's not in the game as much. Well, Peter, congratulations on winning your second round. I look forward to seeing you do your lap of honour a little later. And I'll, I'll let you go back over to the Melbourne rooms and spur them on. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. Peter Moore, 1984 Brownlow medalist. And we'll be back here at the MCG in just a moment. Westpac brings you Advantage Saver Plus. The personal banking package that gives you all the advantages of Australia's most advanced electronic banking system. Advantages like access to your money at more times and in more places. High interest on your savings. Plus, checks totally free of bank charges. And gives you the card. Advantage Saver Plus. From Westpac. The bank. When Bob Anser talks about competition, people listen. And if you want to win, you've got to love to compete. You've got to thrive on the challenge. For Bob Ansett and Budget, every day means a new challenge. Because they know they're only as good as their next customer. That's why their rates and service have to be better than the competition. In real terms, car rental is cheaper today than it was 10 years ago. Why? Because we love competing. That's the spirit of Budget. Now is the time for Diet Coke. Now is the time for Diet Coke. You're gonna drink it just for the taste of it. Living good with Diet Coke. This is the one from Coca-Cola. We're gonna taste with just one calorie. Just for the taste of it. Just for the taste of it. Diet Coke. Hey, Mum, how come we're using Blend 20 instead of that other air freshener stuff? Those other ones just cover up. But Glen 20 really kills smells because it kills the germs that cause them. Yeah. Glen 20 destroys disgusting mm. odours without heavy perfume. Yeah. And in the bathroom and sick rooms, it disinfects and kills most disease germs. Yeah. So Glen 20's not just a cover up, it deodorises and disinfects. Yeah. Gotcha. Earlier on, I did a little more than I should have, and I have a tendency even now uh, to try and take on a lot more things than I can really handle. I think I can handle them, but I can't always do that. And so I, I suppose, yes, the, uh, the strain of uh, racing around Australia, doing this, doing television shows, making records, all sorts of things uh, put a strain on my health. On the anniversary of his death, we salute J.O.K. The Wild One. This is his story, premiering 7.30 Monday. So half time, 6 9 45 to Melbourne. They kicked 3 4 in the first quarter and 3 5 in the second. Carlton very disappointing, 2 3 at quarter time and then 3 5 at 23. So 45 plays 23, half time in the reserves grand final. Summary of the game today, gentlemen. Well, it is a typical grand final, I think you'd agree, Peter. Both sides really throwing themselves in as an indication of the scores 45 to 23. In that second quarter, I think. There was really no player dominant except, I suppose, John Fidget centre half forward. Everybody was throwing themselves in. Every score counted, and uh, Melbourne scored 23 points. There we see the fight, and this is how the game started off. So it, it was just an indication there of exactly the intensity, the ferocity, the desire that both teams had. They were in there. They're going to test one another out in the first couple of minutes, which they did, which usually 
does happen in uh, grand finals that uh, players are keyed up, but then they settle down and went on and played football. And we see there an early snap by Peter Dean, which is Carlton's first goal. Yes, and uh, there were some good highlights. Uh, that was a beautiful hand pass from Withers over there to the captain of the Melbourne Reserves, Greg Hutchison, for a goal. And uh, the young Melbourne side, they started off with plenty of handball. That's Ray Jordan's style of play. This was uh, Regalo there on screen on the right foot. A uh, very casual player, Frankie Regalo. Very, very good kick for goal, and that was one of his three goals for the first half. That was Greg Hutchison again to uh, Ted Fitz. That made a big difference to the game when Ted Fitz came on the ground at half forward flank because he immediately had a number of kicks, uh, kicked the goal and was a very, very good player. That was beautiful football there by Batterston to get the ball out to Regalo for another one of his uh, three goals. And at this stage, Melbourne was starting to get on top. Uh, Regalo, again, cleverly got it back. As you see, he gets it back to Wilson. Wilson, a little bit selfish on that account. Could have given it across, but elected to run in and kick it himself. But nevertheless, it was a very, very good goal to the Melbourne side at that stage. I wouldn't have said a little bit selfish. I would have said very selfish. Yes, well, I, the, I noticed the runner, Don, didn't go out to him either about that, which was fairly surprising. Well, I suppose this is Brian Wilson's uh, quirk of his play, and I know we interviewed Stephen uh, Icke a couple of weeks ago, and he said he'd had to be playing up in the air, uh, Brian Wilson, as far as the goals are concerned, because you'd be standing like a statue, never yeah. receiving a hand pass. But well, course, that's his style of play. Well, and uh, Stephen's the opposite, of course. He, he feeds the ball out to everyone who runs past. OK, thank you, gentlemen. At half-time, Melbourne 6 9 45, 22 points in front of Carlton, 3 5 23. We'll take this break now from MCG and be back in just a moment. Announcing the new Holden Astra. Giving up city bars and burning wheels at lights. I'm glad I'm civilised now. I'm glad I'm civilised now. Giving up platform shoes and Marxist blend. Blues. I'm glad I'm civilised now I think I'll enjoy more Australian views I'm glad I'm civilised now New Holden Astra, the civilised hatch It's gotta be bonds It's gotta be bonds The things that they face, they do and debate How can you go wrong? It's gotta be bonds Oh, summer long They're fresh and they're cool You'd be a fool not to try if you want From the city lights to the little towns And the mighty rivers flow Tasmania's magic Tasmania's magic From the fighting trout in the mirrored lakes To the place the jet set play From the forest wild to the rocky coast That'll take your breath away It's a different place with amazing grace To spend a can you resist this temptation? Eight magic spring days on a fly drive Tasmanian holiday. First class accommodation, a rental car with unlimited kilometres, discount passes to 33 attractions, just $409 per person from Melbourne. See your airline, travel agent or TAS Bureau. Tasmania. Be tempted. At last, aspirin in easy to take capsule form. Windsprin from Winthrop. For many years, aspirin has effectively helped to relieve headache, pain and fever. Now aspirin is available in convenient, easy to swallow capsules. Windsprin capsules from Winthrop. Blister packed for your protection. Windsprin should be used only as directed and your doctor consulted if pain persists. Windsprin. Aspirin in a capsule from Winthrop. Sunday at 7.30, be there with Me and My Girl, starring Richard O'Sullivan in his hilarious new British comedy. At 8 o'clock, bless this house, the best of British, Sunday night, commencing with Me and My Girl at 7.30. And that's the scene at the MCG, half-time in the Channel 7 Reserves Grand Final as we see Roger Merritt and Danaher and in fact quite a lot of the Essendon players out on the ground at the moment checking the conditions, the weather, the ground surface uh, and just getting generally, I think, a feel for the main game that's uh, going to come your way on 7 a little later on this afternoon. Well, one of the highlights, of course, of Grand Final Day is the Grand Final Breakfasts, the champagne breakfasts that are held right around town, not just necessarily in football clubs, but everywhere on uh, mornings like today. And Peter Donegan's been pretty busy because he filed this report from the Fitzroy Grand Final Breakfast earlier this morning. 
Thanks very much, Graham, and good morning, everyone. Well, as part of grand final celebrations around Melbourne today, this morning we visited the world. OK, sorry about that. Just giving you the score. Half time in the reserves grand final. Melbourne 6 9 45, 22 points in front of Carlton at a 3 5 23. And now giving you the under 19 a grand final score. A big win to North Melbourne, so they'll be celebrating today. They beat Richmond by 68 points in the under 19s. And it was North 17 19 121 to Richmond 7 11 53. OK, I think we're right now. So here again is this report from Peter Donegan. Thanks very much, Graham, and good morning, everyone. Well, as part of grand final celebrations around Melbourne today, this morning we visited the World Trade Centre, where about 500 or so loyal Fitzroy supporters gathered for the 1984 grand final breakfast. It was a great atmosphere this morning, and there were some very familiar faces. One familiar face here on Channel 7 is John Orchick, but he was sporting a new look, as you can see. There was also Fitzroy coach Robbie Walsh, who did such a marvellous...